Hello and welcome to SCN Summit State of the Supply Chain hosted by Food Logistics and Supply and Demand Chain Executive. I am Marina Mayer, Editor-in-Chief, and I will be your moderator for today's session, A Four-Letter Word Shaping Today's Workplace Culture, where Mitch, where Mitch Luciano, CEO at Trailer Bridge, will share his insights on the transformative power of love and shaping a thriving company culture. So let's met, meet Mitch really quick. With a reputation for his entrepreneurial spirit and love for people, Mitch is an experienced and results-driven business development professional, transforming the transportation and logistics industry. He was named one of Supply and Demand Chain Executive's 2023 Pros to Know winners and is a past Jacksonville Business Journal Ultimate CEO honoree. He joined Trailer Bridge in 2012, and under his leadership, Trailer, Trailer Bridge has been named an Inc. Best Places to Work, a Jacksonville Business Journal Best Places to Work, the number one ocean carrier in logistics management's Quest for Quality Awards, and one of Inc.'s 5,000 fastest growing private companies in the United States. Just a reminder to our audience to submit your questions via the Q&A console on the screen. We will try to get to them at the end of the discussion. And don't forget to check out our downloadable assets on the main portal page. There you can download our digital media kit, access information to our awards programs, including our Women in Supply Chain Award, which closes June 7th. You can download some of our exclusive content, specifically the future outlook on last mile and grocery and implementing gender balance in supply chain management and more information about our Women in Supply Chain Forum, which takes place in November in Atlanta. Also, there's a survey. Don't forget to take that. It's also located on the main portal page. So with that, Mitch, welcome to the program. I say we let, let's get started. Uh, thank you, Marina. It's good to see you again. It's so good to see you. So when I think of company culture, obviously, I think of Trailer Bridge. So when it comes to company culture, Trailer Bridge rises to the occasion. Walk us through what it means to have a culture-focused company. You know, so the four-letter word being, being love, um, and it's something that at Trailer Bridge we embraced, let's say, probably about eight to nine years ago. And, and I think every every company has a culture. It's just how we define it. You know, there's companies with a, a toxic culture. There's companies with a family culture. And, and, you know, we identify ours as love, and it's just a – it's a respect for the coworkers and the kindness of people we work with. And it, it certainly did not happen overnight. You know, it was something that was going to take many years. And it did take many years to build trust that when someone um, is giving you feedback, it's not, it's not for intent of harm, but for intent of good. And so all those things, and we, we cover it with love and there's so many things underneath it that, that truly bring it alive. You know, I think that it's funny when people, my favorite comment always is when people get hired, they hear about this. And after about 60 days, a lot of times I'll get a note saying, oh, my gosh, it's true. Like this isn't, you know, there's not a bunch of Kool-Aid people are drinking. This is the way you guys treat each other is just so incredibly kind and respectful. And I can feel it every day. And they're excited to come to work. And, you know, and, and again, that's what culture is. You're excited to come to work. You're not excited. And all those things play a role in the, in the culture that the company builds. So you certainly don't shy away from using the word love when you discuss the topic of company culture. In fact, I see it written all over your face as well. And this is not the norm. Have you always been this way or was there a moment you began using it and implementing it? I think defining it as love was something um, new for me. And it probably really started in the you know 2010 11 time frame you know I, I i've been in this industry now for almost 27 years and with i believe that i've always treated people with kindness and respect and worked with people and and gave them positive feedback and gave them sometimes very tough feedback but still with the intent of improving them and positive and it was a book that i read by um steve farber back in 2006 and 7 uh, called radical leap and LEAP stands for love, energy, audacity, and proof. There's other words that go in front of all that. Um, Steve would be mad at me if I just left it at that. But but love really stuck with me. And I realized, like, wait a second. Why can't we just, why can't we say, you know, we love somebody? Like when I say, I mean, at the end of some of my emails, I'll put LYA, and then everyone knows that's love you all. There's no, there's no malicious intent. There's no, I think people feel like when they use the word, it's got to be, hugs and kisses and touch and that's not always the case it can be kindness and if you love somebody in your life you're kind to them you respect them you do things for them you've got their back 
And so why can't you do that at work? Why is, why is work excluded from doing those things that you do with your own family or do those things in your private life? So I think it would really, it became more alive for me at Trailer Bridge because the company had such a toxic culture that I was like, wait a second, we can really bring this culture alive again via love by showing each other respect and kindness and all those things that come with love. So there are several supply chain companies still trying to figure out the secret to company culture. How and where should companies start? I think, you know, I still go back to, I think everyone has a culture. I think what people miss, when times are good, everyone loves working inside the culture of a company. You know, it's, it's good times. It's great. We're having fun. We're celebrating a lot. We're going out to eat a lot. We have lunches brought in a lot. Over the last couple of years in the supply chain world, transportation, times have not been good. You know, it's been very challenging. And I think when, when times do financially turn south, is when companies forget about the core of who they are and they don't stay on the path of what they said they were committed to. And they start making these drastic changes, think they're going to prove things, and magically they don't. Do the things that got you to where you were. Yes, you may have to make some tweaks so the company can stay afloat in these challenging times, but it doesn't mean you can't be kind still. It doesn't mean you can't believe in your core principles of you know, um, being, being accountable to each other, um, respecting each other, having integrity, showing some integrity. I mean, calling each other family members. That the one thing I would tell you a million, a million times, I can hear family used a hundred times a week at Trailer Bridge. So companies in tough times forget about that, and they don't stay, they don't stay focused on their, on who they are and what got them there. So, what are some common traits a successful culture-focused program should entail, and then walk us through why? Um, you know, I think the, the number one common, number one common trait, it has to start at the top. You know, I, I've, I don't believe if the, if the leadership of a company for doesn't believe in it, they, then they won't support it. And then it's tough to build that culture. So I think that, you know, if you, you know, when you try to focus on your culture to improve it, I assume it's to improve it, right? You know, if people have a really great culture, they're not going to go, okay, let's change our culture. Um, to improve it is you, you know, you got, got to get rid of the, the toxic individuals in your, in your business. You have to start trusting your employees. You have, you know, I'm always cautious to use the word empower because the power can be really powerful, like really strong word. Um, but you have to give them the ability to make decisions in their role and not be hovering over them. Uh, you have to, for God's sake, you have to show some compassion. You know, in today's world, things happen to people that sometimes, you know, everyone's got challenges in their life. And we have to remember ours are different than theirs, but it doesn't mean theirs are not important. So showing compassion for people, you start doing some of those things, you'll start developing a program. You'll start hiring the right people. You'll, when you hire the right people, those are the people who you're going to be in two years. So make sure that they represent who you are and what you want to be. And, and it's, always not, it's not always the highest performer. You know, I'm not saying hire the, hire the lowest performer because they're just a nice person. But there's a middle ground somewhere. If the high performer is a jerk, no, don't hire them. Um, so you can find that middle ground and find the right people to help build that culture. And that will start the program. So as I said earlier, you were named a recipient of Supply and Demand Chain Executives 2023 Pros to Know Award, really mainly for your efforts in fostering that positive company culture. What does it take to create and employ a healthy workplace? I think it's both uh, mental and physical, right? So I think culture is really built around the, the, probably the mental side of what we do. Uh, you got to give them a safe work environment, obviously. So that's the physical side. But, you know, you also have to make sure that you take care of them, you know, physically. Currently, there's a thing here in Jacksonville, like last three months, it's a sporting event. So all these different companies come together and they play against each other, volleyball or, or uh, basketball. Uh, they were playing cornhole. And so there's a physical element, too, that we have to make sure we take care of the employees so they're physically healthy. And then there's that mental element that making sure they're healthy will only enhance the culture of the company. If, as an example today, I bought a very unhealthy breakfast for the corporate office, so breakfast sandwiches, but I followed it up with a Costco order that had bananas and apples and trail mix and stuff. So I was always like, okay, we have to also have the healthy side. So I think when you take both the physical and mental health aspect, it will help your culture come along because they, they're not lacking sleep because they're healthy. They're working hard at the job because they're healthy. They don't need a long break because they're healthy. I mean, 
all those things play a role in creating a culture and creating culture and creating a, I don't know, a successful company. And I know that we get this a lot too with, with some companies who have a lot of remote workers, you know, for those remote workers, what does that company culture look like? So for us, I mean, we, we don't have a whole lot of remote workers. When we, after COVID, we came back and, and almost full force in the office. However, we do have, we do have some, and they were part of the office before they became remote. And so they, they knew our culture already. And I think the biggest thing I would tell you, if, if, if we had to do a more remote setup, would make sure we always had inclusion. Remote workers feel excluded because they're not part of things, but a lot of things like, when, especially during like COVID, if we had like maybe lunches were delivered, we deliver lunches to the people's houses. We would do certain things so that it's like a company lunch for the day. They get one at their house. They're like, well, wait a second, this is pretty cool. So it's just that those little, I'm not saying lunches create a positive culture, but remembering that they're there will help them remain part of the company. I mean, how do I get on this free lunch list? <laughs> that sounds pretty exciting, especially as a remote worker. I'm your name, Catherine, and she takes care of all that stuff. So. I, I, I absolutely love that. So at the end of the day, why should companies care about company culture? Uh, number one, it defines who you are, right? That is the very first thing that comes, comes to mind. And, and it defines who you are internally, and it also defines who you are externally. What I've seen externally is people see what we're doing at Trailer Bridge. Um, they've asked me to come sit with their team and talk to them a little bit, um, see if there's things they can do to help improve their culture. So it's, it's a definition of who you are as a company, internally and externally to the public, to, to customers, to vendors, and it goes a long way. Um, I think the other piece that's, that's really uh, key um, is employees and retention. I mean, if you want to be successful, you better keep your employees and employees leave toxic places. They just naturally do. Or if they don't, they're a person who likes the toxic environment, which I, that's not who we are. So if you can retain your employees, if they're happy, your customers are happy, your financials are happy, your owners are happy. It just goes on and on and on. And so I, I, having a positive company culture is critical to, to any kind of success. Well, thank you, Mitch, for joining me today. Thank you to thank our you. audience. It was so good to see you again and catch up. <laughs> In our, I know, I love it. An archived version of today's presentation will be posted at scnsummit.com, or you can access the on-demand version from the registration link that you use to log into today's segment. While at scnsummit.com, there's still time to register for this week's session, including our previous sessions on the state of the supply chain industry, and generative AI. And tomorrow's discussion on the state of transportation, just go to scnsummit.com to register. Again, my name is Marina Mayer, Editor-in-Chief of Food Logistics and Supply and Demand Chain Executive, and I hope to see you again at our next SCN Summit event. I am here with Mitch Luciano, CEO of Trailer Bridge and one of the winners of this year's Pros to Know Award presented by Supply and Demand Chain Executive. First off, Mitch, congratulations on this win. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. So let's talk about you. Kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey and how you got to this current stage in your career. Well, I'm actually entering year 26. Um, I started back in 1997, in June of 97, and so um, I guess I'm finishing up year 25, starting year 26. And I started as logistics uh, operations and dispatch at um, uh, the largest 3PL in the world, in C.H. Robinson. And, and over the last 26 years, I've been afforded a lot of great opportunities to lead divisions, offices, um, start companies, and about, uh, it'd be just over 10 years now, I started at Trailer Bridge and got this amazing opportunity with, with the people here to run an ocean company. And then we've diversified so much over the last, you know, three and four years. It, it's, it's been exciting for myself and, and seeing people grow. It's been super exciting. So as you know, most supply chains have struggled over the past couple of years. Kind of walk us through what you and your team and even your company are doing to kind of help heal the logistics space. You know, I... I've been asked this question a couple of times and what the last couple of years have meant. And, and, I, and for us, 
our customers have not seen that impact. And I think a lot of it's because the supply chains that have seen a major impact have, haven't, they've bounced around with partners or they haven't stayed dedicated for the last five, six years. They've tried to save money when they can. No, no fault of theirs. They've been, they've been told to save some money. And I think they paid the price, unfortunately, the last couple of years. And, you know, our customers have, we've been dedicated to them. You know, we, in the world we live in, you have contract and spot. And we've kept it, that's that contract customer for the majority of our business. And it's made a big difference. And it's gonna, it's made a big difference for us even over the last six months because we've continued to grow. We've seen some of our competition in volume and we've continued to grow and, and build up opportunities. Um, and so uh, for our customers, we, we've, They've remained healed, I guess you could say. Uh, just due to the fact we, we were there in the beginning, we were there two years before the COVID started, and we're still here now, and we still want to uh, support their needs. So what advice do you have for the youth of today looking to get into the supply chain industry? You know, once every couple of months, we have an onboarding here at Trailer Bridge, and obviously it's a lot of youth and a lot of new employees, and we probably have about 20 to 25 new employees every two months. and. That is a question to ask me, what what advice would you give me? And I tell them, I say, work hard, take chances, and be a yes person. And if you do those things, opportunities will come your way. You may not have the solution in front of you, but with the VAT, with 300 other employees inside of Trailer Bridge, somebody has experienced what you're experiencing, and get that support, and you will have opportunities of growth like nobody else. Um, And it's, for, for for the younger generation, it's a little difficult, but at the same time, they want to know they're making a difference and that we are here to help change the world in any way we can, and we hope that they have the opportunity to do the same. So then what would you tell your younger self? <laughs> I, you know, and, and God, I hope this doesn't come across as arrogance or anything. Do it again. You know, I, I you know, I... Moved from North Carolina to Arkansas to run a reverse logistics company. I had no idea what reverse logistics was. And I did it. And I took the chance. Um, I started three companies from scratch. And I look back and never thought I was an idiot for doing it. But what an experience it was and the challenges you face. And so when, when the other challenges come up, you're like, well, that's nothing compared to what I've experienced in the past. And so you know, I would I would do it again uh, and enjoy every minute. It, if there was one thing I'd say is I probably focus more on the people. I learned that over time. It was I focus so much on the business and not the people. And over the last 15 years, I've learned to really focus on the people because they are the business. So let's do a little bit of a lightning round just to get to know you a yep. little bit better. Absolutely. Dogs or cats? Love them both, but I have a dog. Yes. <laughs> Breakfast or yeah. dinner? I'm a big dinner person. I'm not much of a breakfast. Shopping in person or online? Five years ago, I told you in person. Now it's 100% online. It's just so easy to return stuff. Exactly. And it's so funny when I ask this question for people who are in it day to day, and they're like, well, I want to support this side of it because that's my business. But, (laughs) you know, so it's just always funny to see these answers. So then kind of what do you see as the top three predictions or even trends for the supply chain space in 2023? I think the number one thing is you're going to see the customer base downsize their carrier base. And, you know, they've, they've had to, you know, one of our largest customers two year, year and a half ago had 120 carriers in their base. Then they went down to 80. We made the cut and now they're going to go down to 50 and, and we're pretty confident we'll make the cut there. They don't need all these resources anymore with the, with the, increased capacity or lack of freight, increasing capacity, whether it's international or, or domestic. I think that's number one. Number two is you're gonna see a lot of people that have taken a lot of these profits over the last couple of years, and they made all these investments in their business, which is fantastic, but those capital costs are gonna come and bite them in, bite them a little bit here in the coming year, and people are gonna to have to be quick to make changes and instead of hanging on to things. And then lastly, as a prediction, um, I think you absolutely will see by the end of 23 and getting into 24, the, the, the cream will rise. The best of the transportation companies have these very smart, uh, educated risks over the last couple of years. They will remain in business and they will get stronger as others, unfortunately, are, 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 will weaken a little bit. So you're named an overall pros to no winner. What is next for you? What is on the horizon and in the works for you? 
You know, uh, well, there's two sides to that for me. One is, you know, continue to see Trailer Bridge grow. We, we've, we've grown 30 to 40 percent every year and all the new people and getting to know them. I, you know, I have a stack of birthday cards sitting right over here. I write a personal birthday card to everybody and the, the stack's getting bigger. So that's a little challenging, but continue to do that, getting to know the people that we hire inside of Trailer Bridge. Uh, for me personally, I would love to start the process of, I've always wanted to write a book. And, you know, I have, I have a million different ideas of what type of book and what would I say in the book and would it be a, you know, a fable of some kind. You know, I, I love I love uh, Mitch Album, Steve Farber, or some of my two favorite authors, and writing a book similar to their style. Um, you know, let's see if I get started at 23. Over the last couple of years, it's a little challenging to have the personal time to get that kicked off. But hopefully maybe something, some brainstorm will start. I love that. Mitch Luciano, CEO of Trailer Bridge and one of the winners of this year's Pros to Know Award presented by Supply and Mansion Executives. To learn more about Mitch, just go to sccexec.com.